Bonjour mes amis, je suis Funky Monkey. Bienvenue dans ma maison d'amour. Oh. And thank you Mr. Blue Text for translating from the French there. Now then, as you've probably guessed, we're covering a French subject this week. I haven't personally seen that much French cinema, but it's safe to say, I should think, that the action genre doesn't really get its due in the Gallic Salle de Cinéma. Which brings me to today's topic, the fifth element. Released in 1997, the fifth element is the classic struggle of good against evil, slightly skewed by director Luc Besson's influence française. The story concerns one Corbin Dallas, and his involvement in the quest to recover the means to an ancient weapon that will neutralize a planet of pure evil. So grab your vests and get ready for the future as we gather around the fifth element. Our story begins in 1914, as an explorer and his aide discover an ancient legend. Enter the Mondeshuans to collect their artifacts. The Mondeshuans, guardians of the four elemental stones. When gathered around the fifth element, they produce a beam of pure light that destroys evil. Specifically the evil shadow planet that is dispatched towards Earth every 5,000 years, for reasons that are never explained. And they're reclaiming the stones because Earth's about to be embroiled in a world war. Three centuries later, and we're introduced to absolute evil. And Priest Vito Cornelius. Cornelius brings us up to speed on the Shadow Planet. Essentially, it's just a big ball of space evil. A big evil ball from space. Now where have I heard of that before? The Mondashuan ship carrying the fifth element is attacked by Mangalores. There are no survivors. No Mondashuan survivors, that is. The last surviving remnants of the fifth element are reconstructed on Earth. But our heroine is disoriented and lashes out before making her escape. Reminds me of the first time I went to Birmingham. Confronted by the police, the element makes a leap of faith. Right into the back seat of Corbin Dallas's cab. After a brief exchange, the police arrive. Corbin makes his decision and protects the element. Cue that most wonderful of things. A flying car chase. Which we're skipping because YouTube. Damn copyright trolls. After eluding the cops, Corbin brings the element to Cornelius. And we finally get her name. Le Luminara Le Catariba Luminachai Ekbat Desebat. Or Lilu for short. Lilu explains the fate of the other elements. Intercut with our introduction to Jean Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg. The villain of the piece. The other four elemental stones weren't on the destroyed ship. Wisely, the Mondashawans never completely trusted humanity, so they gave the stones to someone that they did trust, who was to meet with Lilu at Floston Paradise, where they would be delivered and returned to Earth. Back at Corbin's apartment, his old commanding officer shows up with one last job. Followed by Lilu with Cornelius in tow, who steal his tickets, which he won in a contest that the military rigged, before the police arrive on a bogus smuggling tip, arrest the wrong guy, and then are ambushed by Mengalors, who steal the guy that ended up with Corbin's door tag. French farce, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what more can I say? At the airport, Corbin and Lilu prepare to board the flight. And while the police are distracted, Cornelius sneaks aboard. The police were distracted by the Mengalors, who used the image of the guy that they kidnapped to try to reach Floston first, and when that predictably doesn't work, they start shooting, which also goes about as well as you'd expect. And so, Corbin and Lilu arrive at Floston Paradise, and Corbin makes his way to his contact, the diva Plava Laguna, but the Mangalores want the stones too, and so, Lilu takes it upon herself to avenge her near death with extreme prejudice. Not that it does so much good, however, when Zorg enters. Sadly, Plava Laguna dies, but not before revealing that she's internalized the elements. And so our hero retrieves the four elemental stones 
single-handedly repels the Mangalore invaders, rescues Cornelius, and recovers Lilu. But Zorg set a bomb. Luckily, our heroes escape on his ship. At the temple, the stones are set in place. And after a crash course in ancient super weapons, they're all set. With only seconds remaining, it falls to Corbin to activate Lilu. With a kiss, no less. And so, Lilu fires the light of creation at the evil ball, and the evil is purged, leaving behind a new moon. And so, our movie ends with the president stopping by to congratulate Corbin and Lilu. But they're a little busy. So that was the fifth element, and I just have to put this one into my house of love. This movie is a textbook case of how to make a basic story into a memorable experience. The fifth element is a bizarre, cartoony sci-fi actioner, but you could take the plot and put it just about anywhere. And really, that's the main thing about this movie. Style over substance, sure, I won't argue that, but the style is overwhelming. Gaultier's costumes, all the vivid colours, the dystopian flying cast through New York, it's an incredible spectacle. And while it does have Miller's teenage boobs, a splash of blue blood, and an exploding tricky, this is a fantastic choice for a family movie night, and no self-respecting sci-fi fan should be without it. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. Au revoir!